Welcome to the fourth Sunday of Advent. We're so glad you've chosen to worship with us today. And uh, I'll see how many of you are paying attention. Someone dropped in the narthex their uh, red lobster card. I, 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 whoever it is, would you please raise your hand? <laughs> All right. The, the, <clears throat> the arm wrestling for it will begin immediately following the service. But if you've lost a, a Red Lobster gift card, it's going to be up here on the front pew. And after the service today, uh, Diane and I have a Christmas card to give to everyone. So on your way out, be sure and get a Christmas card from us. And uh, there's a lot of things in your bulletin. There's the blue note card, which uh, you fill that out and drop in the offering plate. We know that you're here that way. Uh, we also have a special Christmas offering envelope in there. And then the, perhaps the most important, next Saturday is a Christmas Eve, and we're going to have a special Christmas Eve service here at 6 o'clock. It'll probably go to 7, 7.15, depends on how long it takes that artist to draw the picture. And uh, so uh, we want to invite you to come, uh, bring the kids, there'll be a story, all the children will get a storybook. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful evening. We'll be singing uh, Christmas carols, and it'll just be a, a great way to introduce Christmas. And of course, we're having Christmas service next Sunday, same time as usual. <clears throat> People often ask me uh, when it comes to uh, closing on a holiday, I said, it's the Lord's Day, isn't it? <laughs> and then we're having church. And uh, so <clears throat> one time there was a blizzard when I was pastoring in Philadelphia. And uh, <clears throat> I said, I know somebody's going to show up. Now, we, we had like a 25-foot snow drift. It was huge. It covered the road that came in. But uh, the airport was right next to our church, and the wind would blow across and blew this. And they had front end loaders out of there, and they carved a path through the road. I mean, because fire trucks and things had to get through. So I arrived at church, and there was only one person there. And they said, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, we came to worship, didn't we? So the two of us sang a duet. <laughs> that was a music service. And then I preached. Well, you heard about the farmer, right? The farmer that went to church? And uh, it was a snow blizzard like that. And uh, he was the only one, and the preacher was there. And the preacher said to him, well, what do we do? And he said, well, hey, man, when I go out to the barn, you know, and only one cow's there, I feed it. Oh, man, that's all that preacher needed. He got up, he preached his heart out. I mean, he just really preached his heart out to one guy. At the end of the service, he went to the door, he's waiting, shake the hand of the congregation, <laughs> the one man. And he said, how'd you do? How'd I do? And he said, well, when I go to the barn, there's only one cow there. I don't feed it the whole load. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's winter time, right? It's winter time. And, and last Sunday, we had quite a bit of snow. My wife decided she wanted to go Christmas shopping. So I said to her, I said, hon, hey, if you're going to go out in that snow and it gets really bad, it's going to get dark. It's dark early now, doesn't it? And so I said to her, hey, hey, if it's really bad, just wait for a snow plow to go by and just follow it. Just follow it. So, sure enough, she comes out. It's dark out. It's snowing like crazy. She brushes off a little bit of the car, gets in. Truck goes by. She pulls out real quick and she follows it. She follows it and she follows it. Every turn he makes, he, she makes. F finally, finally, he, he stops. He gets out and he knocks on the window. She rolls down the window and says, he says, uh, is there anything I can help you with? You've been following me. He said, oh, yeah, my husband said, if it snows like crazy, just follow the truck, it'll, it'll, you know, and I'll be safe. He said, well, okay, I'm done with Walmart. I'm going to go across the street now and plow the Myers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we have some uh, real uh, announcements here, too. Uh, there will be uh, the, the men's Monday night football has ended uh, for this season. But you'll notice in the bulletin that we have some upcoming events. One of them uh, is a men's Bible start study. It's going to be starting on Monday nights in January. If you're interested in that, men, let me know. Uh, we're also going to begin baptism classes. And uh, I think uh, we've covered what I need to cover there. I want to pause before we begin our service today. There were several prayer requests that came in this week. And I just want to make sure that we cover those. You can put your prayer requests on the blue note, and we'll, we'll pray for that in a little while, too. But, um, oh, there's one other announcement. There's going to be a D decorating the church on Sunday, January the 8th. And uh, we want you to plan to stay afterward. We'll have soup and sandwich potluck. There's a sign-up sheet out in the, the, the narthex there uh, on the easel, so you can uh, sign up to be a part of that. 
and help us take down the decorations that we put up for Christmas. Just want to start getting that announcement out. Um, but I have a, a number of the prayer requests that have come in, and I want to pray for those now. Let's just bow our heads before the service starts and pray for these. Father in heaven, we do pray for Anna McGregor, who had a fall this week, and Lord, although she didn't uh, break any bones, we're so very thankful for that, but at the same time, Lord, she's very sore, and we pray for your healing. We pray for our brother, Paul McFarland, uh, who's at Beaumont Royal Oak, Lord. Um, he's been there since uh, Wednesday. They've determined he has uh, some infection, and we pray, Lord, that you would just make whatever measures they do to be effective to bring healing in his body. Lord, we just want to say thank you that Mary Ann Kreitz is being released from the hospital today, that uh, they've been able to determine something very, very simple, that her medication levels were wrong, causing her difficulties, so they can change those, and she'll be able to be back about her daily routines. We pray for her, Lord. And we pray also for Gretchen, Judy Brassel's daughter-in-law, who has just begun chemotherapy, we're asking, oh God, that you would make this to be effective in her body. We know, Lord, from our perspective, it works for some and not from other, for others. But you are the Lord, the healer, and we're asking you to make it effective, O oh Lord. As a God who hears us when we cry out, we pray for these special requests. Now bless us as we worship, Lord. May we lift up our voice in singing unto you, the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 2, 10 through 14. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Today, we relight the candles of expectation and hope, recalling God's promise, the candle of preparation, remembering the voice crying in the wilderness, urging the people to prepare the way of the coming Lord, and the candle of proclamation, reminding us of the joy, finding him. Now, we light the candle of revelation and peace. We celebrate the announcement of the coming king and the greatness of God's love revealed through the Christ child. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for revealing yourself through Jesus, and we praise you for the greatness of your love. Help us to share your peace with others and live our lives with more like Christ every day. In his name we pray, amen. Amen. They just shared with us the Advent prayer, and uh, in a moment I'm going to just ask a blessing on the offering for today. But I do want to say that your offerings have been tremendous. I don't know if you've noticed in the, out in the, the parlor area, we've got a coat rack of coats that have been donated for the, a coat. Uh, that is out of your generosity of love and care for people in need. There's also a mitten and gloves tree and hats, and it's just covered with uh, gifts that you've given for those who don't have those. And then there's the reverse advent. Have you noticed the reverse advent tree? It's been kind of bare. It's kind of loaded today because everybody's brought their reverse advent uh, items in. And on top of all of that, our church has participated in helping the open door ministry. And yesterday, uh, by, before I left, over 60 families came here to pick up uh, a Christmas meal of which our church provided well over 350 pounds of potatoes. That was a lot. Let's give everybody a hand for that. Isn't that great? That's out of the generosity of your heart, and we're just going to thank God for that and then ask him to bless our offering out of the generosity today that comes from our heart. Father in heaven, we think of the greatest gift that was ever given. It's called the indescribable gift the gift beyond words of our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate that in this Advent season, fourth week of Advent, and Lord, we anticipate next week, the final week of Advent, when we celebrate the birth of our Lord, when God sent his only begotten Son into the world, who is the gift of God. We're thankful, Lord, you've touched our hearts in such a way that that love of God that's shed abroad within us has been spilling out of us. It just oozes, Lord. 
We've given the Lord uh, to meet physical needs. And it's heart, our heart's desire that the Lord, with the little flyers that we placed in each basket, that those who received would come back and, and Lord, find that they can have their spiritual needs met. As their body hungers for physical food, we pray, O oh Lord, that we might be able to feed them the Word of God, which man lives by the very Word of God. Lord, we're going to give our offering now, and as we do, you said you love a cheerful giver. So with cheerfulness in our hearts, we place our offering in the plate as it goes by to just say, Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Thank you for loving us. In the name of Jesus, amen. It's always nice to have some guests with us, and I see that uh, several do because of the holiday season, I'm sure. But uh, I have a niece here and a great niece here and my sister-in-law and another sister-in-law and a brother. And I suppose everybody went around here, they'd say who they've got with them too. But uh, they're sitting down here in the front row and so glad that they're here with us today. And then in the back, we have uh, not a stranger, uh, but Mary Garone is here with us. And uh, Mary has uh, a place. Yeah, let's give her a hand. Uh, Brian Wooster, uh, Nona Pam and Marcy's nephew, uh, is functioning only on 20% of his heart. And he needs, uh, pardon? Oh, it's wife Linda, I'm sorry. Yeah, his wife Linda is only functioning 20% of the heart and is in need of a heart transplant. So let's be in prayer for Linda. Uh, Doug, who's at uh, age 40, is in stage four pancreatic cancer. Has a wife and two kids. Pray for Doug, okay? And uh, so that was uh, a request that was made by my wife, okay? And then um, Lois Rick asked for prayer that she will be having some tests this next week and uh, is uh, very worried about it. And that's uh, Edna Hill's daughter. So let's be praying uh, for Lois as well. And then Lily has asked us to pray for her grandma who broke a hip and uh, for that uh, Lily's dad can believe in the Lord. You know, those are the ones that touch my heart for the salvation of a loved one. And we do want to pray for that. Then there's 12-year-old Olivia, who has been uh, operated on for a brain tumor, and we need to pray for her as well. Let's take these to the Lord in prayer before uh, we look into the Word. Father in heaven, I've read these, and uh, I remember uh, Hezekiah in the Old Testament, he received uh, a notice of bad news, and he took that letter, that scroll, and he took it into the house of the Lord and laid it before you, and you intervened. You did so miraculously. And so, Lord, these have come to the front of our sanctuary, and we lay them before you. And we ask, O oh Lord, what we've read that you've heard, that you will be merciful and gracious and kind to hear our prayer request and answer in mighty and powerful ways. And now, Lord, we ask that you would remove all the distractions of this world from our minds. And for the next few moments, we'll be able to give uh, our thoughts and, you know, to your word. And may your, your spirit so impress upon us a truth here today that we will take it home with us. And, uh, Lord, we'll, it will be the very truth that will sustain us through the week. And for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. His name is wonderful. We'll sing through it two times.
Jesus is my Lord, then I am his people that he came to save. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that marvelous? Perhaps you made Jesus uh, your Lord and Savior today. You prayed just a few moments ago and said, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. Save me. And if on the way out you just say, hey, Pastor, I did that today. Just say that. Uh, that would just bring joy in my heart. And I'll remember to pray for you that God will strengthen you in your faith. On your way out, just say, I did that. Okay? Let's pray. Father in heaven, bless us on this week of Advent as we have learned more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless us, Lord, throughout this week. Prepare us for Christmas Eve and for the final week of Advent, Christmas Sunday. Guide and direct us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful Lord's Day.